What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to the Manchester United Liverpool FA Cup quarterfinal preview, tactical analysis and prediction video. My prediction for the game is a very hard fraught 2-1 Liverpool win and I'm quietly optimistic because Liverpool have been playing pretty well lately even with 7 or 8 injured players we have been winning games consistently but Man United away is always a tough game no matter what form Man United or Liverpool are in so let me know your score prediction in the comments below and the last time Liverpool played at Old Trafford was 2 years ago on August the 22nd 2022 and we lost that game 2-1 that was at the beginning of last season which I think uh, was a shock to everybody because Liverpool was expected to start the season on fire after chasing the quadruple the previous season and then if we didn't even make it the Champions League thanks to those games where Liverpool just under underperformed but since then we have beaten Manchester United 7-0 at Anfield and this season we couldn't beat Man United at Anfield, it was a nil-nil draw after Liverpool had like 34 shots, ridiculous amounts of chances, Man United defending resolutely and Liverpool's finishing was really bad that day. But since then we have improved our finishing so so much and that's what Liverpool need to do, we need to finish our chances, we need to make uh, our chances count because we will get chances against this Manchester United side and Liverpool have uh, beaten Man United before that uh, 2022 game. We have won at Old Trafford twice in the Premier League in a row, winning 5-0 and 4-2. So we scored 9 goals in the two games previously at Old Trafford and also we have beaten them at Anfield 4-0 and 7-0 before that 0-0 draw. But as I said, Man United away is always a tough game because we lost in 2021 in the FA Cup against Man United 3-2 and we were the favourites that time as well. So we really need to be very very careful with this game. Both teams have loads of injuries and it looks like... Uh, Casemiro will be missing the game. Of course, Liverpool have a long injury list. Trent Oxano, Thiago, Bajcetic, Joao Matip, Konate, Diogo Jota, Curtis Jones, Ben Doak and uh, even Ryan Gravenberg could be missing the game. But I, f I heard that Gravenberg could be fit to play this one. And I think the key will be the midfield again. But an Endo McAllister, Soboslay midfield, dominated Manchester City. So surely that midfield can dominate Manchester United's much weaker midfield. But the crowd will be with Man United and they will be roaring them on. And we have to watch out for their attackers because Rashford and Hoyland on their day and Bruno Fernandes on their day can hurt any team. And Garnacho has grown into a very, very good young player as well. So Liverpool will be... Ha we we have to be really in top form and the magic of the FA Cup was witnessed yesterday where the championships Coventry City knocked out Wolves in the most dramatic fashion possible. Coventry were leading 1-0, they were missing loads of chances and then Wolves came back, they equalized through a big Coventry mistake then they thought they got the winner in the 88th minute. They were leading 2-1 until the 97th minute and after the 97th minute Coventry scored two late goals to win the game 3-2. It was an absolute bonkers game and by the way there are no replays in the FA Cup quarterfinals. So if it's a draw then you go to extra time and potentially penalties as well. But Liverpool want to win the game in normal time because we have so many games uh, coming up after the international break. But you know what? This is just before the international break. So maybe if it's a draw and it's extra time and Liverpool win in extra time, I will be fine with that. And it's weird because we haven't played Man United at Old Trafford in two years. And now we play them twice at Old Trafford in a month, in less than a month, in three weeks time on April the 7th, Liverpool go to Man United again in the Premier League. So Man City are already through to the semi-finals, they beat Newcastle comfortably 2-0. Coventry are through and I hope if Liverpool go through that we get Coventry in the FA Cup semi-final but I, it will be probably Manchester City and also Chelsea and Leicester will be 
the winner of that tie will be the fourth quarter finalist. So it could be Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City and Coventry. That's the most likely scenario, but hopefully Liverpool can get the business done. And I think another key to this game where Liverpool could win this game is the pace of Luis Diaz, the pace of Darwin Nunez, the pace of Mo Salah. I think Jurgen Klopp rotated the team very smartly against Sparta Prague. Luis Diaz didn't take part at all. Darwin Nunez started but, and he scored, but he got substituted. Yes, Salah played the full game and Dominic Sobosli as well. But because they missed so much time with injury, it was better for them to play the whole game, the whole game to just get back up to speed, of the, they get their match sharpness up, get their match fitness up, and now they will be raring to go against Manchester United and Sobosley and Salah and many players said many times before Liverpool want to win every single competition that they enter. That's always the aim. But this season we actually have the squad for it. Even with seven or eight injured players out, Liverpool can rotate and Liverpool have the young players coming through like uh, Conor Bradley who is starting regularly now and uh, Kwanzaa who is another youth academy player who hasn't been praised enough because this season he has been a first team regular and I can't stress this enough he's just 20 21 years old he's a youth academy center back he was on loan at Bristol Rovers last season coached by Joey Barton the clown and this season he's playing for Liverpool regularly starting against Manchester City in the Premier League playing the whole game pocketing Erling Haaland why are no pundits talking about Jarrod Kwanza more often because he has been a regular first team player from the start of the season but what a story to pluck a 21 year old a 20 year old youth academy player the centre back is the position where youth and experience uh, counts uh, the most in terms of uh, you know the more experienced you get the better you get as a centre back so so imagine if Kwanzaa is so good at 21 years old that he can play against Man City, the best team in Europe, and play and play well and dominate uh, the game. Imagine how good he can be when he reaches his peak at 27, 28 years old. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Jurgen Klopp spoke on some team injury news on Friday. He said Ibu Konate didn't train on Friday. We have to see if he can train on Saturday but it will be a tight tight race which we will probably lose but we don't know. So Konate will probably not be back fit. Uh, so the big question is who starts at centre back? Is it Joe Gomez and Van Dijk or is it uh, Kwanzaa and Van Dijk? And probably it will be Kwanzaa and Van, Dijk, and Van Dijk because Joe Gomez is our only fullback apart from Conor Bradley who can play right back. Tsimikas and Andy Robertson can play left back so they can rotate there but nobody can rotate Conor Bradley. But maybe if the Klopp's thinks you know what let's play Conor Bradley from the start and Joe Gomez can start with Van Dijk at centre back and then we have Kwanzaa coming on potentially for, Go for Van Dijk or Gomez at centre back and then you know Gomez can shift to right back if something happens to Conor Bradley um, and I think Robertson will start this game. Joe Gomez started at uh, left back against Man City and I thought he played really really well and then he switched, switched to right back in the second half after we made some substitutions but you know what uh, Tsimikas is also doing well he's playing well as well. Gravenbach is back in contention and there was positive news fr from Jurgen Klopp on Bobby Clark. Bobby Clark felt much better, Klopp said. That was uncomfortable. He got a knock against Sport Prague, a little swelling, and that's why we had that feeling that it might be something more serious, but thankfully it's not serious, so Bobby Clark is fine. Ryan Gravenbeck trained, so he's ready for the Man United game. Liverpool will continue to be without Trent, Alisson, Bajetic, Doak, Curtis Jones, Jota, Matip and Thiago. Uh, and that's eight injuries still for Liverpool's first team players. Bobby Clark, Harvey Elliott and Ryan Gravenbeck are one yellow card away from a one-man suspension in the FA Cup. So they have to be careful not to get a yellow card, but probably only maybe Harvey Elliott will start the game. And by the way, Harvey Elliott has been absolutely magnificent. And Man United have some injured players coming back. Hoylund, Maguire and Aaron Van Bissaka could be available for Man United to play. But Casemiro could be out and that's a big positive for Liverpool because Casemiro is one of the best midfielders of Man United still even though he hasn't been in particularly great form 
for Manchester United. And Jurgen Klopp praised Joe Gomez and he said that he has been absolutely exceptional and he deserves to be called up to England. But my worry is the last time Joe Gomez got a really serious injury, it was an England duty, so hopefully he won't, he won't get injured again. He played so many different positions, Jurgen Klopp said about Joe Gomez. Really happy for Joe and I saw on his face he was very happy about it as well. I said a lot of times, without the kids, we are not where we are, we are and without Joey, we would be definitely not where we are in the moment. Remember when Trent Oxford was injured, when Robertson was injured, when Simikas was injured, our three best fullbacks were injured. Joe Gomez played left back and he played like the, he has been playing there all his life. He could took a couple of games to adjust to that position and he wasn't great in those first two games as, le as left back, I will be honest with you guys. But after that he was absolutely exceptional. And Connor Bradley also, a youth academy player, had to play at right back and he was exceptional there as well. So I just hope and pray that Joe Gomez doesn't get injured on international duty because uh, that's the most important thing for Liverpool, not to get more injuries during these in international breaks. And the Casemiro injury news comes comes from the Brazilian national team's uh, Twitter account who confirmed that Casemiro won't be selected for the international duty because of picking up an injury and Curtis Jones is also on uh, the um, radar of the England manager Gareth Southgate who said Curtis Jones was definitely somebody we were tracking very closely ahead of his injury we were without doubt very excited by his performances so if Curtis Jones gets back fit he could be called up to the England national team for the Euros and I hope Joe Gomez, Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott all are getting called up to the England national team because they should be selected ahead of the likes of Jordan Henderson who is be playing pretty ever for Ajax. Why is Jordan Henderson still selected for the England national team? No disrespect to Henderson, he's just not at that, that level anymore to be an England international player. But Gareth Southgate picks names, not players in form or players with uh, top quality. I mean, yes, he picks players with top quality, but not all of them. Mo some of them are picked on form. I mean, when Harry Maguire was in terrible form for Man United, he was picked by England manager Gareth Southgate as well. So that says it all. I'm really looking forward to the Man United Liverpool game. Come on, Liverpool, let's beat Man United. Let's get to the FA Cup semi finals. Let's get to Wembley and let's try and lift as many trophies as possible for Jurgen Klopp this season. And after this game, there is the two week international break. So hopefully, Liverpool will get a lot of their injured players back. Uh, Alisson, Shota, uh, Trenox, Arnold will be back after the international break. So hopefully, Liverpool will have um, almost fully fit squad for. Uh, the rest of the season. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for watching guys. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.